Good morning and welcome. Welcome to worship for this Sunday, January 17th. We're back in my makeshift bedroom studio today. We haven't been back here in a while, and the simple reason is that I've been under the weather this week, and I went to get a COVID test, and I'm still waiting for the results. Now, that means that if you're waiting for the results after you've taken a COVID test, you self-quarantine until you get the results. If, they're, if the results are negative, you go about your day-to-day -day routine. If the results are positive, you quarantine for a further period of time. I'm feeling fine. I I think I just have a bit of a cold, so uh, a cough, sniffles, uh, uh, sneeze, stuff like that. So I'm okay. Don't worry about me, and I expect the results in the next 24 hours or so. So uh, don't worry about me. I'm doing fine, and I'm looking forward to being back in the sanctuary real soon. Uh, worship today is being provide, pre presided over by Elder David Brown at Resurrection. But here online, it's the same thing. The order of service is found right there on the screen, so simply follow along as you begin your day and your week with God. Let us begin. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of Christ, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now hear from our choir.
lesson today is from 1 Samuel chapter 3. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as the other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Alleluia verse. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said of him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael said to him, How do you know me? Jesus answered him, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered him, Because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree. Do you believe? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see heaven opened, and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our sermon hymn today is Listen, Listen, God is Calling. Please sing along. Listen, listen, God is calling, through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, comfort, and joy. Jesus gave his mandate, share the good news, that he came to save us and set us free. Listen, listen, God is calling, through the word inviting, offering forgiveness, 
comfort and joy let none be forgotten throughout the world in the triune name of god go and baptize listen listen god is calling through the word inviting offering forgiveness comfort and joy help us to be faithful standing steadfast walking in your precepts led by your word listen listen god is calling through the word inviting offering forgiveness comfort and joy listen listen god is calling through the word inviting offering forgiveness comfort and joy we make our beginning in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen can you tell the theme that runs through our old testament in our gospel readings this week the theme is the call of God. And more than that, because we hear about the call of God all over the Bible, but more than that, the general theme is that the call of God can come from the places that we least expect it at the time that we least expect it. That was certainly the case with Samuel, and that was certainly the case with Philip and Nathaniel, and we will get to all of them. But let's start in the Old Testament. Let's start with Samuel here today. And uh, Samuel, um, he was uh, he was one of the miracle children of the Bible. You recall that God chose that his mother Hannah, late in life, had not born Eve, had not born Elkanah, um, her husband, any sons at that point, any children. So God opened up Hannah's womb so that Samuel could be born. And God had told Hannah and Elkanah through Eli the priest that uh, they'd have a son and that this son was to be set apart for, uh, for, a life, uh, for a life of service to God, set apart for service in the temple. And so that's where Samuel was as a child. We don't know how old he was at this point. The, old, the ancient historian Josephus thought that he was about 12 years old. That would seem to be fitting with uh, certainly Jesus in the temple, a foreshadowing of that. But, but, but Samuel was a boy, and nothing extraordinary had happened in his life. He served in the temple. He served Eli, Eli the priest. He was an old man at that point, and he waited on Eli night and day and night. And that's where we find Samuel at this point. He had gone to bed. Eli had gone to bed. Just an ordinary day had gone by. He expected an ordinary night's rest. And Samuel heard a voice calling to him. Samuel! Samuel! Well, who else would be calling Samuel in the middle of the night in the empty temple but Eli? So Samuel rushed over to... <coughs> Excuse me. So Samuel rushed over to Eli, and he said, "He, he said, what, what's going on? What's up? How can I serve you?" His specific words there were, um, uh, "They were, sir, were here I am, here I am, for you call me." And Eli said, "I did not call. Go back to bed." Essentially, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. Samuel was thinking, "Well, maybe my ears played tricks on me. Maybe I." He had a dream or something like that, so he went back to bed, probably thinking not much of it. So the second time, it, it happened again. Samuel, Samuel, got up, rushed over to Eli's bed. Samuel was a good was was a good was a good aide to Eli. He ran over even even I mean he was probably thinking some along the lines of the boy who cried wolf, except he was hearing things. Here I am. I'm here. What can I do for you, Eli? I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So things were getting weird. So Samuel thought, well, I'll go back to bed. What, what, what else can I do? Eli didn't call me, so go back to bed. The third time, Samuel, Samuel, rushed over to Eli. Here I am, for you called me. And what's very interesting in this text is that uh, is that 
first of all, we were set up with the fact that God wasn't speaking to his people very regularly through dreams or visions. This was uh, this was at the end of the age of the judges. Things had calmed down generally in Israel. There was no longer any great need for military conquest in Canaan or anything like that. So God was fairly silent. More to the point, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. That's not to say that he did not believe in God at that point. That's simply to say that God had not revealed himself to Samuel in the ways that he would previously do. He did not know God in this sort of person-to-person -person way that Samuel would, uh, would soon know God. So it was Eli. Eli was Samuel's spiritual mentor at that point, and Eli sort of perceived that something was going on here. He, 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 had, he guessed he had an intuition. After all, serving in the temple for so long, he had certainly seen some amazing things. Uh, and so he said to Samuel, I'll go back to bed, lie down, and if this voice calls to you again, Simply assume that it's God talking to you. Assume that it's God speaking. And say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. And so, and so, uh, Samuel went down, went back to bed. He was probably a little bit weirded out at this point. He did not know what to expect. But suddenly, again, from out of the darkness, the voice came to him again and said, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. What follows is, is an interesting text. Verse 11 of the text, we didn't read it today, said, Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I am about to do a thing in Israel, at which the two ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. God was about to do an amazing thing in Israel, setting, setting Israel on the path to receiving the reign of King David and the United Kingdom and on the path, of course, to Jesus Christ. Ears open, Samuel. Ears open to all of us to hear what God might be calling us to do. Because that call can come when we least, <coughs> excuse me, when we least expect it, as was the case with Samuel. So the call can come from when we least expect it. What about from where we least expect it? Let's go over to uh, let's go over to our gospel reading today. J Jesus um, he was baptized in the Jordan River. He spent forty days in the desert. He returned to the Jordan once again. Uh, John said, "Behold the Lamb of God." Once again, then he left and he started calling his disciples, and that's where we find Jesus today. He decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said, follow me. Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of God. So Philip had found, uh, Philip, had faith. Philip had extraordinary faith at the moment of that call. We don't know what that was like. We don't know quite what that was, but it was truly extraordinary, truly outstanding. So, um, uh, we found him, we found the Christ, we found Jesus, we found the one who had been foretold from of old. He's from Nazareth. Nathaniel said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Those are interesting words, aren't they? Those are very, very interesting words here. Can anything good come out of, <coughs> excuse me, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Nazareth. Nazareth was up in the north. It was a backwater town. It was a backwoods town. No one really cared about it. It was not cosmopolitan like the city of Jerusalem. It wasn't, it wasn't a great center of commerce or anything like that. It was Nazareth. Nothing really happened there. Nothing good, nothing bad. There was just nothing going on in Nazareth. Nazareth was not the place that you'd expect the Messiah, the long-awaited Savior of the nations, to come. And yet, there he was, standing on the banks of the Jordan, the one John pointed to, saying, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. 
from Nazareth, from the backwoods, from the sticks, from the place that you'd least expect the Savior to come. That theme of shattering expectations is something that continued throughout Jesus' life. Shattered expectations, of course, at his birth. What does the birth of a king look like? It certainly doesn't look like being laid in a feeding trough, being born in a barn. It certainly doesn't look like that. It certainly doesn't look like being greeted by mangy, foul-mouthed shepherds and foreign soothsayers and astrologers. Being a king, being God, certainly doesn't look like having to run away into Egypt out of fear of your life. Jesus was shattering expectations from his birth. Jesus shattered expectations throughout his life. He shattered expectations of what a religious leader should look like. Not one who was super concerned and super worried about keeping all the intricate pharisaical portions of the law, but one who put love above all else. That was an expectation shattered of what a religious leader would look like. Shattering expectations by healing on the Sabbath, shattering expectations by preaching sermons that were unlike anything that anyone else had ever heard, teaching and preaching with authority, shattering expectations in the way that he would save the world. You'd expect a savior, a leader, one who conquers to do so through military might, him to lead up and raise up a great army to do battle. Against, uh, against his foes, to maybe do this sort of apocalyptic revelation-style battle against, uh, against the foes, against the armies and the foreign powers of, uh, and, and, and all those who would seek to do God's people harm. Jesus shattered expectations in the way that he saved us by going to a cross. It is the place that we would least expect salvation to be accomplished was on a cross. And here's why. On that Good Friday, it looked like evil had triumphed over good. Jesus said, it is finished. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And he gave up the ghost and he breathed his last. Jesus was dead. That's not what we expect God to be. We don't expect God to be dead. We expect God to be living. Jesus shattered expectations by saving the world, not through brute force, but by submitting to the will of God. Jesus shattered expectations by defeating the devil, even though he looked like he was the one who would be defeated. Jesus shattered expectations by rising from the dead, even when everything looked like it was all over, like it was all over for the people of God, when it looked like the devil had won at just the right time. Jesus Christ rose from the dead, shattering expectations of what victory would look like. And he still shatters expectations for us this day. Because even though we walk in a land of death, even though we have a cough and a sniffle from time to time, even though we all will die someday, death is not the end. That gravestone is not the end. The tomb is not the end. The urn is not the end. Jesus shatters expectations even there by raising us to new life, by raising us from the dead. Death is not the end, even though everything looks like the end there. Expectations shattered. New life is ours. How is Jesus calling you this day? How is Jesus shattering expectations for you this day? Could it be that, some, that Jesus, that God may be calling you to do something extraordinary? at a time or at a place where you least expect it? Could it be that God is calling you to a, to a deeper faith even in the midst of pandemic and disruption and things like that? Just as Samuel was not expecting a call to come from God in the middle of the night, maybe God is calling you to deeper and deeper faith 
in the middle of this dark year that we're going through. That's one way. Maybe God is calling you in that way, shattering expectations of what faith should look like. Maybe God's calling you from some place that you'd least expect it, from some uh, from someone who you'd least expect to be bringing you God's word, from some uh, from some place, someone who comes from a place that you might look down your nose at from a group of people that you might look down your nose at. Maybe God's calling you and speaking to you through that person, through that place, through that thing. Because the word of God, God's word, can come through any number of sources, any number of places. It's all here. And if you hear someone preaching, you better check to see if it is in the word of God. You better check to see if it's truly there. But nevertheless, the call of God can come from expectation-shattering places. And that's fitting. It really is. Because if, the, because if God himself shatters expectations of what life looks like, of what death looks like, then so also can he call us in expectation-shattering ways. God shatters our expectations, too, of what he can do in our lives. Have you ever felt in your life like you were unworthy of God's love? Have you ever felt in your life like you have done so much bad that there is no way that you can be, <coughs> excuse me, that there is no way that you can be redeemed? Have you ever felt in your life that there's no way that God can love you? God shatters expectations of what love is. We don't do anything to deserve God's love. Even in our own lives, there are people who, if they're mean to us, if they're nasty to us, we shy away from. I fully get that. I fully understand that. But even though we sin against God daily, God still shatters expectations of what love looks like by continuing to love us, even though we were still sinners even by dying for us, being tortured for us, being humiliated for us, even though we've sinned against him. God shatters expectations even of what love is. So be at peace this day, saints of God. Be at peace knowing that you are loved, that you can live love, that you can live in the midst of God's expectation shattering love. And know that God has given you all these good gifts, the forgiveness of sins, life, salvation, and he's brought you indeed to peace with God, a peace which passes all understanding, keeping our hearts and minds on Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, you have called us into the fellowship and priesthood of your Son, Jesus Christ. By his incarnation and great work of salvation, heaven is open to us in him. Give us boldness to cling to your faithful call, that your deliverance will not be hidden, but spoken freely in all the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you are the Lord, and you do whatever seems good to you. As every lawful authority on earth comes from you, uphold in righteousness and health our nation with its leaders. Preserve in wisdom and honor Donald, our president, Joseph, our president-elect, Kamala, our vice president-elect, J.B., our governor, Lori, our mayor, and all public servants, including our armed forces, polices, police, and first responders. Send peace in our time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God, behold in mercy all for whom we pray. Bring healing, comfort, strength, patience, and certainty to all in need. Receive our thanks for your constant watch and merciful kindness. In every sorrow and every joy, do not let our eyes be drawn from the greater marvel of your kindness in Christ Jesus, by whose grace and forgiveness alone we receive every blessing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our closing hymn this day is Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus. Please sing along. Let us ever walk with Jesus, follow his example pure, through a world that would deceive us and to sin our spirits lure. Onward in his footsteps treading, pilgrims hear our home above, full of faith and hope and love. Let us do the Father's bidding, faithful Lord with me abide, I shall follow where you guide. Let us suffer here with Jesus, and with patience bear our cross. Joy will follow all our sadness, where he is there is no loss. Though today we sow no laughter, we shall reap celestial joy. All discomforts that annoy shall give way to mirth hereafter. Jesus, here I share your woe, help me there your joy joy to know. Let us gladly die with Jesus, since by death he conquered death. He will free us from destruction, give to us immortal breath. Let us mortify all passion that would lead us into sin, and the grave that shuts us in shall but prove the gate to heaven. Jesus, here with you I die, there to live with with you on high. Let us also live with Jesus, he has risen from the dead, that to life we may awaken, Jesus, you are now our head. We are your own living members, where you live there we shall be, in your presence constantly, living there with you forever, Jesus, let me faithful be, life eternal grant to me. 
It's so good to be with you here this day, beginning your week with God. And again, don't worry about me. I am almost certainly fine. This is probably just a bit of... <coughs> I say this as I cough. This is probably just a bit of a cold that I'm going through. That is okay, though. But this does serve as a good reminder that uh, if you are, if you do have any COVID symptoms or COVID-type symptoms, it's not a bad idea to get tested. If you live here in Chicago, the drive through tests are quite simple and quite easy. It's best to pre-register online. You can just do a Google search for Chicago COVID testing and find the City of Chicago site. With that, if you have insurance, it's paid for regardless it's a free test for anyone uh, so that's generally a good idea if you are experiencing any kind of cold or COVID type symptoms just to get tested it's not it's an easy thing you don't have to jab it up your nose anymore they've moved on to a less invasive procedure with that uh, tomorrow Tomorrow is our Martin is the annual Southside Martin Luther King Jr. Day service. Uh, that's going to be taking place at St. Stephen's Lutheran Church up in the Englewood neighborhood, 65th and Peoria. So uh, I invite you to come and join us for that. That is tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning in person. If you want to join us online, you're welcome to do that too. It will be streamed from uh, the St. Paul Austin. YouTube channel. There will be a link to that under this video and uh, and uh, just make sure that you follow that link and that will take you to the stream tomorrow morning. You also got a link in your Resurrection Reporter news email newsletter so check your email for that link as well. Uh, Bible study will take place on Tuesday at, uh, it, uh, normally there'd be a Sunday class to go to, not this Sunday obviously, but uh, come and join us on Tuesday evening for that. But for now, God bless you, be with you, go with you, be well, be well, I know I'm fine, don't worry about me. And, uh, and I know that uh, God's call can come in expectation shattering ways. Simply be ready to hear it and to say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. God bless you, be with you, go with you. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.